اوكي ان شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone. Um, it's nice to see you all. Um, I'm not sure whether everyone attended the first interview that we conducted at the um, um, Islamic Foundation in Markfield um, where we did this interview and we had such great feedback so we decided to um, to continue the interview on the online um, platform. Um, so inshallah we've got uh, some participants here and we can make this a very interactive um, session. Um, but it is also being recorded um, for um, viewers to watch um, in their own uh, convenience for those who can't attend today. So I'll be interviewing um, Dr. Reyes Mustafa. Um, Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Okay, Lina. Thanks. Thank you. So I'd just like to re uh, reintroduce you to our audience because um, I am aware that some people may not have Uh, being there for the first part. We won't cover everything that we um, spoke about in the first interview, but um, the introduction, inshallah, I will keep it very brief and then let you expand on the aspects you want to um, expand on. But um, Dr. Reyes Mustafa, first and foremost, is a very inspirational um, individual, which is why we've chosen to interview him um, for the second interview also. Um, he is Number one, um, a student of Quran, which is what we found very inspiring from his stories and um, uh, anecdotes from the first interview. Um, and then part of being a student of Quran that involves Hifth and Arabic and Sharia um, studying. He's also a father, husband, a lecturer. He's also a consultant, um, pediatric um, consultant in intensive care um, in London. Um, and then to add to that, mashallah, he is a um, senior lecturer in Sri La in the Sri Lanka University. He's a former heads of head of the Peds um, department in Sri Lanka. He is very knowledgeable and experienced in wisdom parenting with emotional intelligence, which we may explore a bit further. He's also set up a few um, schools and educational institutes, both in England as well as Sri Lanka. He's an author, um, and the list goes on. So, Dr. Reyes, mashallah, I, we're not going to be able to explore everything in one interview, and we didn't explore everything in the last interview. Um, but I think uh, for today's interview, we'll first and foremost fo focus on your Quran journey and um, and maybe some things of how you would advise uh, students to prepare for Ramadan and how you began on your hifth journey and then focus on your intellectual approach uh, to the Quran, if that's okay with you. Yeah, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Lina, um, for that uh, very generous introduction. Um, we had actually, the in Markfield, we had a very good time with a, a team of intellectuals, professionals, and more importantly, they were all, in, you know, they were really an inspiration And they were all committed uh, brothers and sisters of you know in our community. They are ready to work, and they're ready to transform to find the purpose of living. So that the retreat is all about um, living with purpose. So we were looking for the right purpose to live, and that retreat was really amazing. So um, so we had about an uh, about 90 minutes, I think, in on that night in in Markfield. So we talked about uh, some, you know, approach to the Quran. Um, I I feel myself more of a student of the Quran than you know anything else. Apart from, I mean, in addition to what is our profession, our career, and all that is secondary. When it comes to the Quran, I think that takes the priority. That is the elephant in the room, or uh, in or in our life actually. So the Quran, the rest is all the other things. So. Um, and I find that Quranic ayahs are very inspirational, very attractive, that gives the contentment to my heart, that gives the light, that gives the, you know, the purpose to life, that gives the inspiration and all that. Then I thought that, you know, like Allah says in the Quran, you know, kunu rabbani yin, so be the people of Rabb, so somebody who is connected to Rabb. By doing what? So how can you how can you be Rabbani in? So there are two qualities mentioned in that. One is you learn the Quran and then you teach whatever you learned. So that's really an amazing journey. Um, so I, in spite of uh, my busy schedule and you know involved in 
a lot of activities and very heavy profession being a pediatric intensive care uh, specialist in London and it's also in Sri Lanka working in two countries. It's quite uh, heavy. But in spite of that, what I find is that Allah puts lots of barakah in time when I when we started to you know explore this journey, right? So this is a journey. This is a this is a, a sabil, uh, as Allah says in the Quran. Uh, you know, I never This surah, um, Yusuf Allah says, you no, know, you tell that. This is my Kulhadihi Sabili, this is my path. So what I do in this path, Adu'u ilallah, I, uh, I I invite towards Allah to come on this path. It's a, it's it's a journey actually. It's 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 a it's a path. So anabu manitabani and ala basiratin, you know, with a clear vision, this we we all have to get onto this path. So when we when we invite people towards the guidance and towards this Islam, it's not just a destination, it's actually a path, right? I don't, you know, if you learn, if you study in the Quran, it doesn't say that you come to the uh, Islam, which is a destination. It's not a destination, actually. It's, again, even in Surah Fatiha, he says, um, right? So guide us in that straight path. So this path and the journey on this path is the most important thing. So in that journey, I find that, you know, um, the Quran was really very attractive. It is giving me inspiration and, um, you know, trying to connect the Quran with uh, with the heart. And I must tell uh, at this point, and I know we the uh, Ahmad uh, Murad is also here. I was inspired by the writings of um, his 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 dad, Allahumma Allahu warhamahu, is about particularly that uh, you know the the book he wrote, uh, Bay to the Quran, so amazing book. So th that book gives a lot of inspiration. So you know like that. So by reading on this um, about the Quran, and then I realized that. It is not reading about the Quran is not enough and is not going to make any difference. But we have to get into the Quran and, you know, dive into the Quran and swim into the Quran and explore the, uh, the that world of Quran. So that is what I try to do. And then when he started that journey, that opened up many worlds, many, you know, worlds to me. And I... You know, I really transformed my thought, my priorities, my purpose of life, my purpose of living. Everything changed. Then I thought that, you know, we need to uh, tell this to the people and we should show this to the people um, and guide them so that they can learn Quran, learn Arabic, and they can experience this amazing, beautiful experience. So that is why I'm just continuing this journey. So of your journey, um, what would you say were the hardest moments? Because not every journey is easy. It's not always smooth to begin with. Can you recall some parts of the journey that were a bit harder and what helped you get through them or what you would advise for others who are taking on the journey and find obstacles along their way? Yeah, I think in in exploring the Quran, the it was initially it was a bit difficult for me to learn Arabic, and you know because I was I never lived in an environment where there's you know Arabic speaking, in an Arabic setting, and then I tried to approach the Quran without learning Arabic, and then I realized that no, it is it it, it doesn't look right because you know when you go into the Quran to to understand the entire ayah of the Quran, we need to know the Nahu, Nitu Sarf and the Balagha. And that's, you can learn the message, but the way it is not only the message that the Quran uh, gives, but the way the, the, the message is said is more beautiful sometimes than the message itself. So when I came to know that, that bit of uh, the Quran, this journey, then I thought that, you know, somehow I need to learn Arabic and that journey is still continuing. So, I, you know, this uh, so I think that was a bit of a bottleneck for me to get into this, uh, the journey. Yeah, and I think now that was find, uh, Yeah, so now I find there are, you know, so many, because this journey, when I started, 
we didn't have that internet, say it's about 30 years ago, uh, we didn't have that internet and the knowledge and all these opportunities to learning is not that abundant as it is now. So that was a difficult part, but I'm sure that now these days for us, there's no excuse, there's no bottleneck. If you want to learn, there are lots of opportunities for us to learn. And I think that highlights the mindset that you have to have when you're on this journey. There's no end goal because you can keep studying. There's never an end point where you can say, I have finished studying. We will always be on oh, the journey of absolutely. studying. So, so that is why I feel that, you know, nobody can claim that we have done, you know, we have got a lot of Islam and we have reached Islam. No, it's it's always a journey, right? Even in you know, another Quranic ayah, we find that uh, Muhammadur Rasulullah in, the, in that also, Rasulullah and the team. So it's a teamwork, right? Uh, so it's it's all always a teamwork on a, on a journey. So I think that we we can't we have to learn this Quran. We have to dive into this Quran, experience this Quran by discussing, by talking. You know, through this, the whole team should travel on this path on this journey that will be that would be an amazing experience yes sure. um you mentioned that since you've um began on this journey you've had a lot of baraka in your time Absolutely. and you clearly have many many um hats and you're juggling many balls at the same time in your different roles um what would you advise to the audience in terms of how to fit in quran and what nuggets of time do you use and what do you advise to those who are um, professionals and are struggling to find time yeah i think it's um you know what i found was i don't know you know it's it's baraka is, i cannot explain that how the baraka works actually that is something about baraka you know you can't explain that you know it doesn't fit into a formula so you just can't explain that but what i found that the, when i started the journey and to learn this and i thought say for example what happened was the major thing happened I when I was NHS uh, working in NHS I was really busy right so then you know uh, without much of an effort I got this uh, my my contract with the Harley Street Clinic in, in in London which is a private hospital where my workload significantly was reduced because in the NHS there are a lot of you know the uh, because it is a government work but in the private sector I could you know I choose what I want and there's a lot of flexibility. Um, so that is so much so that I do a full-time work, but still I take two weeks off and go to Sri Lanka, right, in a month. So that's that much of uh, Baraka. How does it happen? I don't know, but every everybody's situation is different. But I think one thing is very for sure. If we get onto this journey, right, Allah will show a lot of, uh, ex, a lot of uh, you know, uh, doors. It's not my word. Allah says in Surah Al-Talaq, Whoever is coming with the God consciousness, and Allah will show him, or uh, will make him a lot of exits, you know, a lot of uh, exit doors to go, to get, you know, if you are trapped, you will have, will get an exit dose, right? Not only that, and he will give you the rizq from the sources that you never thought of. What an amazing ayah. You see, this sort of talaq, I think ayah number five and the last bit of five and the first bit of six. So if we are God conscious, now if you want to become God conscious, so if you get attracted to Allah, if you live a life with a God consciousness, Allah guarantees you, He will show the you know, doors will, won't be locked. The doors will be opened for you. Not only that, So he will show you the, you know, he will give, he'll provide you. Rizq is not just, you know, the food and the sustenance. It's all, say, our time, if you have adequate time, that's again a, a, part, a, a form of rizq that Allah has given us, right? So he will give that from the, from the sources that we never thought of. Right. So it's it's again, we believe that obviously this is Allah's word. So if we start this journey, the doors will open. We there's there's no doubt about that. 
Um, okay, and so with our um, upcoming uh, Ramadan, how are you preparing and um, preparing for Ramadan and um, incorporating Quran into yes. that preparation? That's actually, you know, the Ramadan, very unfortunately, the Ramadan is in our community. The moment we say Ramadan, what do we think of? Fasting, right? Yeah. Fasting and, you know, uh, uh, suhoor and taraweeh <laughs> and iftar, you know, that's the one that comes to your mind the moment we think of Ramadan. But it's very unfortunate situation because that is how our, our society, our culture our community is um, polarized too for, for, for Ramadan. But actually, when Allah introduces the month of Ramadan, He says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Quran. So He doesn't introduce the Ramadan with fasting, right? He introduces the Ramadan with Quran, right? Shahru Ramadan is the month of Ramadan, unzila fihi al-Quran. So in that, we why it is uh, it is Ramadan? Because of the Quran. And then he talks about a few things, and I don't want to go into detail now. And, and then finally, uh, you know, in that process, he says, therefore you fast. So it's not the Ramadan came not to fast. Ramadan came for the Quran. So because the Quran we have, because the, it is the month of Quran, we have to celebrate the month of Quran. How do you celebrate? By fasting. Right? But the elephant in that month, again, the elephant in the room in Ramadan is the Quran. But very unfortunately, people miss that that bit. And then they are focused on a fasting. But the fasting is a celebration to, to um, celebration for the Quran. So what we should do is we need to give this concept just to understand that ayah. That's it. And then focus on the Quran more in Ramadan. So what we have done is now normally what we do is the last 10 uh, days of Ramadan we you know go to a place and for um, itikaf and it completely focus on st deeper study of one uh, one um, surah. So this time we are planning, a team of us planning to come back to Markfield inshallah, uh, to Markfield Masjid for the last uh, at least you know a week of um, Ramadan. And we are going to dive into Surah Al-Luqman, inshallah. So that's our plan for Ramadan. And is that open to the wider audience or is that a close uh, Unfortunately, because of the numbers are limited, that's already they have booked and, uh, you know, not for the wider audience at the moment. Okay. But it's a good idea for people to do in their own circles. Yeah. There's nothing stopping people from doing that in their own houses or uh, local mosques. Um, so it's a good idea. And even just preparing for that is a way to prepare for Ramadan and uh, you know, intentions are all rewarded. Okay, another aspect um, that you have a lot of uh, knowledge about um, is on our screens, the intellectual approach uh, to the Quran for spirit, spiritual advancement and transformation. Can you tell us a bit more about that, please? Yes. See, now what I find is when, when I started learning the Quran, now, earlier, before I dive into the Quran, before I got into the Quran, I was, you know, outside the Quran and talking about the Quran and thinking about the Quran, and but not got into that Quran. So I didn't feel that experience. So I didn't, uh, you know, it's like, as I explained the other day, uh, in, you know, in, in Mark Field, right? It's like an ocean. So we were sitting outside the ocean in a beach, just sitting and talking about the ocean and uh, thinking, OK, when you say, so what do you see in that ocean? There's some ships and, you know, some boats and all that, some fishermen maybe, um, but nothing else. It's just water. But when you got into that and dive into that, then you see a different world. So similarly, um, now, earlier I thought that Quran is just to recite, just to memorize, and, you know, then you keep, it's, it's, it's a kind of a ritual, uh, you know, just for reading, for, to get some uh, pleasure or some, some, you know, because everybody wants, to, you know, my people, parents ask us to read Quran, so therefore we read, right? And Quran needs to be read, so therefore we read. So, but when I came into the Quran, then I found that the Quran is more, it's, it's, say, it is, um, stimulating our intellect 
right? So it is uh, very much an intellectual, so it's so important to approach the Quranic ayahs and the words and the verses intellectually to get the, the ultimate objective of God consciousness, right? So every there are two types of ayah that we talked about. One is the ayah of the Quran. Those are the Quranic verses. And the ayah that you find in the world, like miraculous signs, the creations. So these are the main two ayahs. So with these two ayahs, there's one objective. You approach the ayah, right? You learn about that. And then that will take you through a process where you become God conscious. So at the end of the day, you approach that and become God conscious. So for that process to take place, you need to have an intellectual approach. That is probably why the Quran started with Iqra, read, understand, you know? It's not, the Quran didn't start with uh, pray or fast or go to Hajj. Actually, the, 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 the Salah became compulsory 10 years after the read. So the read became compulsory. So I think we missed that part as well, you know. So it is the intellectual approach. So our community, our society needs to be intellectually stimulated, triggered, so that the, the way they look at the Quran and the way they understand those ayahs and the feeling and the experience and the pleasure they get is very different when you approach intellectually. That's very clear. The hundreds of ayahs I can quote you know, for for to um, to give evidence for what I'm saying now. And um, Pamela, that's uh, an amazing way to look at it. And uh, but how how would you advise people to uh, apart from learning uh, Arabic? Um, do you do you study it in an intellectual approach with a teacher, or what would you advise? Um, Yes, and it's say for example this. Now I think it's always um, I have some slides I can show you that so that we we, we can go through that. Um, say for example, um, now um, let's say there's an ayah in Surah Al Hajj, right? Um, it says, "Ya uh, nas, in kuntum fi raybi min al baath, fa inna khalaqna min turab," right? So I see this ayah, that the ayah goes on, right? It's a very long ayah. See the start. Ya Yuhannas, O you human being, in kuntum fi raibim min al baath. So if you are in doubt of resurrection, right? So then how does Allah address that problem? So there's somebody there who is in doubt of resurrection, right? So then Allah doesn't say that I am Allah saying that, you know, this is Quran. So you need to just believe that there's no authoritative approach to believe that. Right. There's no command and things like that to believe that. But Allah addresses the intellect. He says, Ya Yuhannas, O you human being, in kuntum fi raibi min al baath. If you are in doubt about the resurrection, what is next? For inna khalaqna min turab. Then here the most important point here is the harf fa. It comes with fa. That means the you know as we know in Arabic the fa it connects right. So your doubt is connected with what is said now the, the, the next part of the ayah. It's not a different ayah. It's the next part of the ayah. So how does Allah connect it? For inna khalaqna min turab. So we connected. We created you from molecules turab. You know, Turab, I was going, I was learning, I was going into these words very deep to find out what is Turab, right? Actually, I read about at least, you know, at minimum 10 tafsirs to find out the very popular tafsirs. What is this Turab, right? Because Allah says in some places, in Khalaknaqum Min Tin, sometimes Turab, sometimes Nutfa and all that. So to get that, Actually, the turab is, in our medical language, if you speak, it's molecule, right? So like, as we know that we as human, we now say if I'm 72, uh, my weight is 72 kilo, exactly 72 kilo. So that means my body 
has 45 kilo of um, uh, carbon. Um, no, 45 kilos oxygen, and I think 12.5 kilos of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and these are those are the you know so the, the all 72 kilos. You can um, it's it's only a few molecules, right? So these yeah. molecules were there in the earth when I was say before I was born, right? Say so that two years before I was born. Where was I? Right, I was in the earth as dead molecule, dead carbon, dead hydrogen, dead nitrogen, right? And then now, so I was born, right? And I was eating from carbohydrate and protein. It's carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, protein, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, water, hydrogen, oxygen. So that is what it is. Uh, you know, carbohydrate, protein, water, and then you become the molecules, the dead molecules becomes live molecule in our body. This is why Allah says, you know, in another, another ayah, Allah says, uh, kuntum, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, in Surah Mulk, it comes, um, First, Allah is, Allah created dead for you. You are dead actually first. Then only we became live and then you become die then you become live so this the 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 in many other quranic ayah allah clearly says this first you are dead then you live now this is our second stage now we are live and then we go into the third stage dead and then we'll go into the fourth stage live so this part if you go further you know in the whole ayah talks about how these uh, the molecules were created, how it became sperm, how it became uh, you know like uh, uh, It's like uh, uh, what do you call the it's like leech like things and you know alaka and all that. So the entire embryological process is discussed in that amazing process. It's, that is so much so that. You know this uh, the the lung man the professor uh, the the I, I as a medical student I learned embryology from the textbooks of I think it's lung man, so that professor who wrote that um, uh, medical embryology book, he finally became a Muslim because he once he went to Saudi and then some you know in that audience somebody asked about alaka right what is alaka means. Then he went into detail and his speeches are there in the YouTube where he finally he said that this is an amazing explanation when, you know, when even now only about 100 years ago, we talked about, uh, started to talk about embryology. But in the Quran, the entire mm -hmm. process in very in detail with every step clearly explained in Surah Al-Hajj in that ayah alone. So that is an intellectual approach to learn and understand, to feel there is a resurrection. So similarly, hundreds and thousands of ayahs we can approach like that. Um, SubhanAllah, that's amazing. And even I, as a student of Arabic, always saw of Turab as dirt or dust or land and never even thought of it being molecules. So just like that for that. Um, it is molecule. Um, it yeah, it is clearly the molecules, and I have a, a separate. Actually, now I am uh, in in Sri Lanka. We, I, you know, I'm part of uh, a ladies' um, college, Aisha Aisha College of Higher Education, where we teach uh, contemporary education and the Sharia education under one roof. And I'm establishing a, a tafsir laboratory based on this ayah. So that means. Um, so we take the, all the Torah, the molecules, and you know, we bring the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and all that, and then bring the um, the, the reproductive system and all that. We to, to get a visual tafsir. It is a visual illustrated tafsir for that ayah, so that anybody who go through that tafsir laboratory um, will they they will they won't have any doubt about resurrection. You don't need to just believe. It becomes yaqeen, ilmul yaqeen, the conviction based on your knowledge. That's amazing, mashallah. It is. Um, 
do you would you advise so you mentioned you've been through diff different diff uh, diversive and um you uh, advocate for this uh, approach to um got it would you advise any particular resources or um sources for students to use well i think uh, you know my personal journey with many uh, you know tafasis is um the what i find is you know um where they i i find a bit of a how do i say that the the contextualization of the ayas are not much i i couldn't find many contextualization say for example the quran is an eternal guidance it should guide you and me today in 2024 in this western world right but you should not always no but when you see some classical tafsirs but it, it doesn't give the contextualization right yes of course there are asbab and nusul there are the, the the reason for the for um uh, the context that the ayah came in but that context but now it is eternal guidance for us for you and me today so how do you contextualize that right so i think that is not happening in many tafasirs so i think it's there should be a new approach and also one of the other thing i feel i ca it, i can't comprehend this at all see there can be one author or, or not author say mufassir he gives explanation to the entire quran how is it possible because allah talks about the embryology in minute detail if you go into that right embryology how can you become a doctor a geologist a scientist a engineer uh, you know an oceanologist and uh, all kinds of science and everything it's impossible so what i feel is that a tafsir should come with the collective approach say i can, i should talk about the area of the knowledge and expertise that i am uh, confident with right so i don't i shouldn't be talking about um uh, engineering right for example allah talks about that or social science or legal matters right so but because if you take the legal matters for example say simple social science say now the other day we discussed about the surah ankabut right about the spider so how beautifully allah has said that so unless you know the life of a spider as a zoologist right you can't understand that ayah Yeah. and allah at the end of he says as you know law kanu ya'lamu so you need to know knowledge to understand that so how i have never seen a single tafsir that talks about that gives tafsir of uh, that ayah right a spider um connecting that to the social science that the ayah is talking about so i think we can't just you know it is our own journey and also again now we the as i said that the um the uh, quran is the ocean now when you look at the ocean you may you may see a wave right but the wave that you see is different from the wave i see so the same ocean might give you different waves so it give you different ideas different thoughts and different feeling to different people so that is the beauty of the quran and also for me right say okay i look at the ocean and you get an uh, wave and then again you look at the ocean but again you see another wave but that wave is not the wave that you saw before right it's a new new wave so is that is how the quran is coming in so i don't think that you can never finish writing tafsir to the quran and nobody can finish write the entire tafsir for the entire quran you can be you know you can only be a student of the quran in some particular areas and if you go into the detail say for example another say for example now what i find is you know whenever allah wants to address the the kibar you know the people who are very proud and arrogant and things like that say i can give you two example one is in suratul um, kahf you know this is about the second story of two uh gardens right um and the, the the two people came to the garden and then some one person has very poor person other one was having this garden 
and he was so proud of that garden. He said that, you know, this garden is going to give me uh, everything. You know, I don't think that this will, nothing will happen to my garden and all that. So he was very proud and arrogant. Whenever somebody is proud and arrogant, Allah brings something. You know what Allah brings in that in that context? Think about your origin, right? Alam yakun nutfatan. Were you not the nutfa, the sperm? So yeah. why do you think about when you think about the sperm? So when you have a deeper understanding, if we know that in one ejaculation, we know as a medical scientist, in one ejaculation, a, a man can produce three to five mils of uh, semen, and one mil may contain hundred million sperms. Uh -huh. So literally. We produce in one ejaculation, you get 500 million sperm. So theoretically, you can produce 500 million people, person, from one ejaculation. You are that cheap, man. Think about that. You are that cheap. So how can you become so arrogant and proud of yourself when you are a cheap product to begin with? This comes in Surah Al Kahf and also comes in Surah Abasa, right? So, so beautiful. See, so I think when you go into detail and uh, deep into that, you see this the beauty of the Quran, how it connects with this uh, in, in that context. That's really insightful. Um, yeah. I am going to ask one more question, but while I ask that question and we explore that, um, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I did see one question, but it seems to have vanished and I can't see it again. Equally, um, we can, if you just put your hand up, I will, um, um, I'll take note and ask you and you can unmute yourselves um, when I uh, give you the mic. So while you write your questions or think of your questions, I'm just going to go on to my next question. So just how you uh, talk about a intellectual uh, approach to the Quran uh, for spiritual advancement. Um, something that you mentioned in our last conversation was that uh, dhikr is not an action, but it's a lifestyle. And so are you almost saying that there's an intellectual approach um, to dhikr as well? Um, and please explore on that. Yes, that's a good idea. So let me, I got some slides uh... Uh, to come to that point, I think very, very quickly. Is that okay if I go through that few slides? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So what I was trying to say in this, uh, you know, there's a couple of slides, a few slides, and then I'll come to that question. So now what I'm, see, the information, the knowledge cannot transform a person. The knowledge alone cannot transform a person. It's like this. See, smoking kills. Everybody knows, but still people smoke because that's a simple superficial knowledge. That cannot transform you. Right. Unless the the knowledge, the, when the transformation that can happen is the knowledge you gain to, through two senses, eyes and ears. Right. These are the two senses, audiovisual we use. So this is received, processed and retained by brain. It is very superficial. It does not transform people. It has a very weak conviction. But when you go into the, um, this Allah says this. Allah says when you when you come out of Allah's you know our mother's uh, tummy, we didn't we didn't know we know nothing right so Allah gives you some hearing visual so these are the audio visual we use in the in, in our contemporary education system. But Allah says there are three organs for you. Just imagine we using two organs. We have advanced the knowledge to, to you know, we are even reaching the Mars now, right? So, but imagine if you open the third organ. Allah says the third organ is afida, right? Fuad, right? The fuad is an inflamed heart. The heart with the passion, the heart with emotion, so if you get that heart, if you open up your heart and that heart will open up and then through that heart, like you, you learn from visual, you learn from your hearing, you can learn through the heart. And obviously now we know that the heart has got um, brain inside. That is scientifically proven now, right? So what we need to do is when, when you approach, when you come to this journey, 
of intellectual approach to the Quran. If you approach with this audio visual, that's not going to help you, right? So this audio visual, this is a traditional approach, but for us to approach the Quran for the intellectual approach, to get that intellectual power, we need to open up the next source, which Allah says in the Quran, it is the fuad, it is the heart, right? So that we need to open it up, right? So we have three windows. If you open these three windows and learn, then that is when you get your intellectual approach for this amazing advancement, for this amazing journey, right? So now, the when I said that, you know, this the zikr is, as the, the question that you asked, the, we said that in that program, zikr is not an action, it's a lifestyle. So that means now what we, what the, the society, what we were taught that do zikr, they say the do zikr, as, as if the zikr is something that we need to act, right? There's nothing like that. You can't do zikr. Right? The dhikr is something you feel, you live, right? It is, it is, uh, it is there. So now I, the, the good example, as I can show you this uh, in this ayah in Surah uh, Al Imran, the Allah talks about Ulul al -Bab. Again, you know, this we, we said about this intellectual approach, right? Now I said that for the to, to understand the Quranic ayahs, ayah of the verses of the Quran, and the ayah in the creation of the uh, Allah's creation in the universe, in the earth, that intellectual approach, that intellect is coming not only audiovisual, but it is a sama wal absar wal asida. So three organs together, right? So that is why. So when you have these three organs bound together, you gain your knowledge that. It is, it's, it's, called, it's not called ulul, uh, ulul ilm. It, it doesn't, you don't call the people of knowledge, right? You don't call it. because Then you have a different name for that. When you recruit your heart for learning, that's a very important point here. You need to recruit your heart for learning. When you recruit your heart for learning, you become knowledgeable but that knowledge, you don't call it ulul ilm, knowledgeable person. You call that person ulul albab, the person with heart. What is albab? Albab is the plural of lub. What is lub? Inner core. According to some tafsirs and some, you know, I was I was studying about this, uh, diving into this word, and what they say, what I found was, the lub is the inner core. Right, the inner core of your heart. So that is where the intellect is seated. And that is in actually in Professor Andrew Armour in Montreal University in Canada, he clearly said that, right? There is a heart, there is a, uh, heart, there is a brain inside the heart. So that is not the nervous tissue. That's not the tissue that we find in our skull. It's an entirely different tissue. It could be the heart muscle itself is, you know, functioning not only the the muscle of of for, for pumping, but also that's the muscle muscle for thinking. That is a, so he says that actually in this Andrew Armour's lecture, I was listening to his lecture on the YouTube. He said that uh, you know I I find some. And nerve endings, uh, not only nerve endings, you know, some like ganglions and things like that. It's a very special ganglion, not the ganglion that we see in our nervous system, but a very special stain and all that, right? So it's clearly, he says that, right? That, and he, he finally he said, I have scratched the surface. I couldn't go in because I don't have the facilities and the knowledge and the technology to go in. So you people have to go in and find out and explore that the loop, that inner core, where the intellect is seated, right? So that is where you use that, that for intellect. So the people who take these three organs, your visual, your hearing, your passionate heart for learning, then you become Ulul Al-Bab, right? So then Allah talks about this Ulul Al-Bab, 
how do they how do they live when you become a ulul albab you have transformed you found your purpose of living you have transformed and you live a life of dhikr you don't do dhikr you live a life of dhikr how does it happen let's just quickly go through the this ayah inna fi khalqi samawati wal lawu the creation of universe and the earth waqtilaf al layl wal nahar alteration of the day and night la definitely sure that is lam tawqid right definitely surely ayatin there are signs li ulil albab it's not ulul uh, ulul ilm right there are signs but it is translated as knowledgeable people see this is where the arab is arab language and the quranic I, the quranic that thought is needed because if you translate this as knowledgeable people it doesn't make sense to me at all right because there are so many knowledgeable people but they don't see the sign they don't see the ayah in the samawat and the arv right they don't see that not all knowledgeable people will see that so the only the ulul albab will see that right and alladheena those ulul albab yadhkuruna they live a life of dhikr this is the fi'l mudari'a it's not fi'l madhi right mm -hmm. And so this edukruna, they live a life of dhikr, right? So when, how, qiyaman, waqudan, wa'ala jinubihim, standing, sitting, and lying down. These are the three positions a human can uh, stay, can take, right? So that means twenty four seven. So how can you do dhikr twenty four seven? You can't do dhikr twenty four seven, but you can live a life of dhikr for twenty four seven, right? How? يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَاللَّهِ And they do the fikr of fikr, they reflect on the samawati wallah and they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا They will surround and say, oh my God, oh my Master, right? These are, there is a purpose behind this. سُبْحَانَكَ See the سُبْحَانَكَ The ka is the, um, you know, second person, not the third person. So this Ulul Al-Bab speaks to Allah on a second person, not Subhanallah, is straight, is, is connected to Allah. What a beautiful. So this is actually is the, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the liver life of the Kirk, right? So again, Rabbana inna ka mantudhi khalina ala faqad ahzayta wa ma lil zalimina min nansarar. Rabbana innana sami'ana munadi ya yunadi lil iman. This is I explained in that, uh, you know, at that night as well. So just for the, those who uh, didn't come on that day, just to make it see, this this part is so beautiful. Now this ulul albab, this person with the inner core, and this person who used his visual, he used to his hearing, and he used his heart to gather the knowledge and intellect. Then he says, Rabbana, oh, our master, Innana, indeed, we samirna, we heard, munadi and yunadi lil iman and aminu brabikum fa'amanna. We heard the caller calling towards iman. Where is the caller in the universe and the earth? There's no person calling it. The whole system is calling it. The universe is calling it, calling towards iman. Rabbana innana samirna. We can hear, actually, literally, you can hear. If you approach this with your heart, with your intellect as Ulul Al-Bab, you can literally hear, you can, you know, witness this ayah. You can hear. So if you go, I told that, you know, when I went to, uh, you know, in many places I've been to the nature, you know, places, that's literally calling you, that's calling you towards Iman. You literally cry, Right. That's what ha happened when I went to Trinidad in that bird sanctuary. I, I told the other day also. I literally cried in that place because that was calling me towards Iman, right? And what of Abrar. So we have to become Abrar and we die with Abrar. See, then, see this, the other part, in another ayah Allah says, Inna sharra dawab indallahil summul bukumul ladhi la yaqilun. The worst creature. Allah says the worst creature with Allah is the summul is um, deaf, bukumun, right, and dumb. Who is deaf and dumb? Who is the worst creature who is deaf and dumb? Alladina la yaqilun. 
those who don't think, there's no intellect. If you don't have the intellectual power, if you don't think intellectually, you are like, you know, that's the worst creature who is uh, Summul Bukmon, right? So, and you have many ayahs like that. Now Allah says, Right? We have created majority, most of the people and jinn for Jahannam. So what is the greatest sin here? What is the sin? What is the crime they committed? They have the hearts, but they don't have the understanding, deeper understanding. It's a clear ayah to say that your deeper understanding comes from the heart. Unless you open your heart, you won't get that clear understanding. So if you want to get that intellectual approach and to, you know, the iman and the taqwa and all that, we need to open the heart. And it's it's very clear. They have ears. But they don't see. They have, sorry, they have eyes. They don't see. They have ears. They don't hear. They're like cattle. No, no, no. They are worse than cattle. So why they are worse than cattle? Because they don't think. Right? And again, uh, this is another interesting ayah. See? So amazing. You know, this is, I had a bit of a difficulty in understanding this ayah because, you know, it, this example is very powerful, right? It's one of the difficult examples to understand, to, to get an image, you know, to imagine that, but it's it's very powerful. So what Allah says here is, the, he's giving an example, right? Those who are kafaru, that you're, those who are ungrateful, those who are not believing. It's like, that is the one who calls, like, you know, like the shepherds, that, you know. But they, so when when the, the sheep, right, when the shepherd um, calls them, they, they, the sheep, they, they don't understand what he says, right? They ex, accept the dua and nida, the shout and cry. That's all they see, they hear. They don't understand, isn't it? So if he says, okay, turn to left, they don't understand that this person is saying me to turn to left. But they just, you know, they just go with that sound and cry and shouting and all that. So Allah gives an example like that. You are, and then he says that, Summum bukmun umyun, these people, deaf, dumb and blind, right? I know it's not politically correct language to use, but that's what Allah says here, right? You see, they're deaf, dumb, and blind. They don't have the thinking. They don't think, right? So like that, there are so many I can, you know, I can talk about. Then, you know, this again, that day also we discussed about that. Here in this ayah, you see, Allah talks about aerodynamics and in ornithology, linking to what? Iman, right? So what is, now my problem is, in which madrasa we are teaching aerodynamics in ornithology, connecting that to Iman. We have taken this science to one planet and the Iman studies into another planet, right? One is in Arctic, other one is in Antarctic. As long as these two are so separated like this, we won't get the feel and the taste of the Quran. So to, if you want to get that feel and the taste and to become ulul albab, we have a much bigger job to do. That job is to bring these two streams of education together and like a two sides of a coin, right? Opening the hearts of the people. Amazing. I'm in awe of the different angles to look at it, um, We have had a question in the uh, audience. Um, a que the question is: As the Quran in its Mus'haf form um, is not is not structured or is not in the order that it was revealed, would you recommend studying surahs in a particular order? Uh, yes, I think there are some people are trying to. I don't know whether it is there or not. There's some you know some tafsir, but I have never read that. 
And I heard about that. Some people have done some work based on the order of the revelation. And, uh, but I think I have not, um, you know, seen that or I have not read that. But I think it's, um, um, my, my how I started this journey was uh, going through, not in, you know, cover to cover or from Surah so, so Baqarah to Surah Nas, but, you know, with um, some subject wise, like, for example, some passages in the Quran was very attractive. So I went into that and I read those passages and memorized those passages and, you know, like, and then went deep into that. So that is how I I, I did that. I think it's, it probably it's a, uh, it's an individual separate journey, I think, because we have a different uh, interest. Um, yeah. And I've just seen another question pop up, but before we go on to that, you mentioned um, focusing on certain uh, passages, and you may have already covered this without actually distinguishing it as your favourite surah or as your favourite ayah. But as a student of Quran, do you have a favourite ayah that you... Um, oh, wow, there are so many. I, see, uh, now, see, some passages are very attractive and very, you know, touching. Say, for example... Um, um, Surat al Muminun, you know, the uh, the you know, like the some ayahs, uh, uh, and Surat al Nur, uh, I the, the most powerful ayah that it it always is very close to my heart is Surat al Nur, Ayat al Nur, right? Because I what I feel is in that ayah is that it's clearly, uh, now see, um. That I I can I have that I I can show that, um, yeah. Sorry, that's yeah yeah. Say Allah Nur Samawati Walal. Allah is the light of the universe and the earth. Mathal Nurihi Kamishkatin. The example of His uh, light is like a mishkat, right? Like a niche, you know, niche. Uh, uh, so in some uh, tafasir, they say that it is where the chest wall is considered like a mishkat. Fiha misbahun. In that, there's a misbah, there's a lamp. So they say that that lamp is the ruh, and that lamp is our iman, the ruh, and that is where the light is, right? And al misbah fi zujaja. So that lamp is in a glass, right? Al zujaja tu ka'annaha kaukabun durriyun. So that the glass is like a uh, like a kaukab like a stars and very illuminating stars right you kadumin sajaratin and it is full with uh sajaratin mubarakati the blessed uh, tree of zaitun right the zaitun tree so this you know in some mufassis they say that when you say sajaratin mubarakatin the sajarat doesn't not just means tree because in other places Allah says Kalimatun you know, uh, say the the uh, uh, the best word is like a sajaratun tayyibat, right? It, it's like a tree. So that tree has a very long roots and very deep roots and a very tall, long, uh, tall um, branches and all that. So it's you know in this ayah, now what we understand is um, uh, the. That Sajarat Mubarakati was in it, Tunatin, La Sharkiatim Wala Arbiya. So, this, see, there's a lamp, right? That lamp gives light. Allah is the light, right? And we have, we all have that light, a part of light here as Ruh. Allah has given that to us. And that lamp is within the, you know, covered with the glass. That glass itself, that lamp and the glass it, it itself is illuminating, so powerful. And that lamp is um, takes its energy from this uh, oil, so that this doesn't come from this oil doesn't come from the east or west. So this, you know, for for us to have this light, and the 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 for us to have that the enlightenment and the light. It will never come from the east or west. We know that we live in west. Do you think that this can come? This enlightenment come from the west? 
Definitely not, isn't it? We did come from the East. No, we came from East. I know that. I, in fact, I explained it. I said that I have lived in the East. I have lived in West. And it's, it, you know, you can't get that enlightenment through these philosophies and the thoughts and things from the East and the West. But it can only come from Sajaratim, Mubarakatin, Zaytunatin. That's that, you know, Sajaratim, Mubarak. Actually, that that is the Quran. And, you know, that is the thought that can make you, that can give you the oil, that can give you the energy for the lamb to be, you know, to have a, a light, the lamb to be a dynamic and active, illuminating, constant light, right? Yekadu zayt wala arbiya. Yekadu zaytuha yubi. Walau lav tam sesunar. That light, that that oil, right, um, is uh, so powerful, it illuminates even without the fire touching it, right? So it's, you know, it's amazing. Noorun ala noor. So when this, the, the noor of the, the Quran, right, with, when this lamp is illuminated and energized by the, the Quran, then that becomes nur upon nur, light upon light, and then uh, Then with this light, Allah already said that Allah is the light of nur samawati wal and they say that Yehdillah Allah will guide this light li nurihi to His light directly li nurihi. So that language is so powerful. So. If we want to get connected to Allah, I think through the Quran, we have to energize our lamp here. So that will keep on giving illumination. It will keep our hearts so illuminated, so powerful, right? And at the same time, that get connected to Allah, right? That light. And that light will, will you know, will change, will transform our heart so that we live a life of a, a, a Quranic person. So that life is completely transformed. Life with the priorities, purpose of life is very different when you get that. And that life is an amazing life and so content life, subhanAllah. And that heart, you know that heart, what will happen to that heart? Again, that's also very interesting that I will show you this. What what happened to that heart? That heart, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When that heart, when Allah is remembered, right? Reminded, what will happen to that heart? وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Right? It will sure. Right? وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهُمْ زَادَتِهُمْ إِيمَانًا when his uh, the the ayah maybe the ayah of the Quran is recited when you learn that or when you see the ayah in the creations what happens zadatuhum imana right wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun so beautiful right so i think that ayah i think that if you ask me i think this is the most powerful ayah that i it's very close to me and this ayah has really transformed my thought. Alhamdulillah, and feeling. And without you even, I don't think you know what the next question, what the question was that I was going to ask, but I think you've already answered it, but I'll just read it out anyway. Um, the question that, I, that came just before I asked you that question was, do you think that all humans have the capacity to understand this or all intellectually, I, I presume understand this means understand the Quran all intellectually. Does it not require a certain emotional intelligence? I think you've already explained, but yeah, um, I think Allah, Allah clearly says, Walaqadi yassadna al Quran al dhikr fahal mi mudhakir, at least four times, right? So Allah has made it very easy to understand. I thought, I can tell you that with my experience, I thought Arabic is not for me, right? But when I started learning, it's the easy, right? When you go, when you go in this journey, Allah makes it very easy, as He promised in the Quran, 
right? Allah will fulfill the promise that he already made the promise. So this journey is easy, right? Learning Arabic is easy and learning the Quran is easy. But only thing is we need to open our heart and commitment. And when you transform, you know, when we get this, see now in this ayah, what we see is here again in this ayah, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, it, the, the Quran, is la tanzilu rabbil alameen it's a revelation from the rabbil alameen nazala bihi ruh alameen it was brought down with ruh alameen jibril alayhi salam ala qalbika so is the 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 quran should live in our heart ala qalbika that's the place that's the only place for the quran we can't just keep it here on the book form you can't keep it here Right? This might help us to, in the process of, you know, bringing it down to the heart, to keep it, to memorize, you know, to, to memorize this and all that. But where do, should it sit? Not in the book, not in the phones and not in the printed form, not in the digital form. It is Allah's speech, it's the audio, right? It's the audio visual sitting in the heart. Allah qalbika. When it comes to your heart, you know what happens? You become an activist, right? Nadir. So you become warner. You won't just sit. You will, first thing is you transform yourself, right? And then your light goes up here. Your chest is getting illuminated. And you can't, you know, the, you always feel it is com you will be compelled to that the, the light is you know radiating isn't it so you can't stop that right you can't stop that so you will be active and dynamic see so i always you know the i i give that example now i i'll give you two practical example of the two people one is my father in law he was a former amir of jamaat islam in sri lanka All right now he's 80 uh, 85 years old is you know he's almost in the bed and he had a brain surgery um so he doesn't go anywhere only thing is he's in, he's very dependent uh you know for everything so one day he, he translated the quran in in local sinhalese language in sri lankan language he translated the entire uh you know modern modi is uh, tafsir in sinhala so the person who worked with him is a young um, ulama. He came to see him. And after uh, after seeing him, so he was about to go. And then he called him. You know, his name is Mahir. He said, oh, Mahir Mahir, so why don't you come back? So please come in again. So he came in. So he asked, so what, Hazrat, what, what, why are you calling me again? Then he said, you see, I can't sit like this. Bring some project. We have to do some work. Right? 85 years old. He can't even walk. He's asking for project, right? So I was amazed by that. Then I remembered this ayah. I think this is working. Similarly, the you know a few months ago I met um, Dr. Ahmed Tutinji in um, in Istanbul, and he's also quite old, and you know is still I met him in his office. So we are talking about a few things, and he said he was asking for project. I again I remembered this ayah. So how come these people who can't even walk? Asking for project. Now we young, energetic people, right? How much work we should do? How much we should be inspired by this ayah, driven by this ayah to, to transform ourselves and to emit this light that we have inside. And we, in, we need to increase the intensity of that light and we have to keep on emitting that light. I think that's our objective. So that is the intellectual approach to the Quran for spiritual advancement and transformation. Alhamdulillah, and that reminds me of my favourite ayah, um, which is in, I haven't got it on a PowerPoint, but it's in Surah Al-Nisa, um, ayah um, number 95, where Allah says, لَا يَسْتَوِ الْقَائِدُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ غَيْرُ أُلِدْ ضَرَرِي وَالْمُجَاهِدِ دون في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم فضل الله المجاهدين بأموالهم وأنفسهم على القائدين درجة وكل وعد الله الحسن وفضل الله المجاهدين على القائدين أجرا عظيما. So Allah is basically saying that the 
of the believers, those that sit and do things, compared to those that are active with their money and their wealth and their risk, they, there's, they're at different levels. And those who are active in their deen and their money and their, in themselves are at a higher level. And so we are all Muslims, but we need to strive for the higher rank and be activists, um, as both of these guys have just um, um, motivated, us, motivated us to be. Amazing. Powerful liar. Very powerful liar. So how are we? Um, so I think we are towards the end of time, unless there's anyone else who has any questions, in which case we can give you a few seconds to type up. Or any you can comments? just put your hand I think uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, Murad is there, so I don't know whether they want to make some comments. So any... Um, anyone can unmute themselves at this point. Don't wait for our permission. Uh, no, I think it was wonderful to listen to you and uh, you covered a lot of uh, stuff from very scientific perspective, which is also my background, uh, having studied biochemistry. And so I think it was uh, very uh, interesting to uh, listen to you and uh, very good points that you have presented. Uh, certainly, our relationship Quran is very unique and personal for each one of us. And yeah. we all approach Quran in with, with our own temperament, with our own ideas, with our own emotions. And so Quran makes a very unique connection with every single person, which is not same and similar to the other person always. Or even though the tenets and the uh, the ideas may be same, but it actually talks to you. And so when you talk to someone, then you have a very unique uh, connection depending on who is talking, to whom. And so I think that's a very important part. And I think you express that in some ways. So Alhamdulillah. Very good, yeah, nice to hear that, yes. That's true, definitely. Any other questions or comments before we end? Or if anyone wants to share anything that they will take away from this um, this event to uh, highlight it for others as well. Um, there was one question that uh, Sister Atia um, raised. I don't know if that was answered. Um, do you think that all humans have the capacity to understand this yeah. all intellectually? Does it not require certain emotional intelligence? Yes, well, we answered that. Yes, one. I think we did that. And obviously, there's emotional intelligence also part of it, isn't it? So we need to approach this with emotional intelligence. And I believe, obviously, the Quran is for Ya Yuhannas. Right? Allah says, Ya Yuhannas qadjaatukum ma'ayatum min rabbikum. Right? So this the um, this has come from um, from your master, then addressing the entire human being. So I think. Everyone has the capacity, as Brother Ahmed um, has said, is, um, you know, it has, different people have a different attachment to the Quran and different experience to the Quran. But at the end of the day, this, my experience may be different from your experience, but both are beautiful experiences, you know. So I think um, depending on the, uh, the area that we come from, our profession, our understanding, our context, our life, and our you know intellectual capacity, our emotional intelligence. Based on that, we may have a different um, feel and different approach. But at the end of the day, the Quran will uh, you know give you. Um, I think the 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 experiences may be different, but all these experiences are amazing, beautiful experiences. So I think everybody can get that experience. Of course, yes. Okay, good. Jazakallah khair, everyone. I think we, I mean, there was another question about which tafsir you, you would recommend. I think we did answer that earlier. So if you, this uh, event is recorded and inshallah uh, will be available for listening um, afterwards. Um, so whoever would like to listen back uh, to anything that they've missed, uh, please feel free to uh, listen. Um, okay. Another comment, Jazakallah khair, all for